When it comes to novel coronavirus or China, you may think of this, this, or this, and you're not wrong. But did the stories about people dying and panicking represent the reality for most Chinese, especially in non-infected places outside Hubei Province? Absolutely not. And you'll know why after watching this video. I'm a New York-based video journalist and came back to China for the Spring Festival this year. Unfortunately, I got stuck here after February the second because of the U.S. travel ban. So for now, I'm going to show you how a typical day looks like for most Chinese. The first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is to check the updates of the outbreak. The numbers are changing every day. As of now, more than 74,000 patients have been infected with the virus, and more than 80% of them come from Hubei Province, according to data from China's National Health Commission. Data from the NHC also shows that after the spike on February 13th, which was caused by the change of the methodology used to calculate patients who are infected with the virus, the trend of new patients is slightly going down outside Wuhan. The high demand of surgical masks caused a great nationwide shortage in supply. To tackle the issue, Qingdao government put up notice instructing residents to purchase masks via WeChat. To place an order, residents would need to make a next-day reservation in the system with a maximum purchase of five masks each person. If reserved successfully, one would need to go to the specific pharmacy for pickup. However, when the reservation opens up at 8:30 a.m. sharp, all the masks will be gone in two minutes. The rapid clearance of masks begs one question: Are there real masks out there, or is it simply a hoax? In China, there is a saying: "Food is the first necessity of the people." As online shopping has taken over China by storm in recent years, I decided to buy groceries online, which seems to be a much safer choice compared to going to a physical store. Even though there are many e-commerce apps available, none of them actually met my needs. The first app I tried was called Li Chun Wang Shang, where there was no indication of when the groceries will be delivered. And the pricing? It was way too expensive. A cabbage, which weighs four kilograms, normally costs eight yuan, or roughly one U.S. dollar, while it costs twelve yuan on this app, up almost fifty percent. I also tried Fresh Hama, a popular e-commerce platform under Alibaba for grocery shopping. Take the example of these pricey tomatoes. It costs seventy yuan for two point five kilograms. Normally, it costs eight yuan for one kilogram. After a disappointing online shopping experience, I decided to shop groceries at a local store. I'm at the entrance of a local grocery store, which is located on the outskirts of Qingdao, Shandong Province. And as you can see, people are coming inside the store, but they have to get their body temperature checked by staff members. And for each shopping cart, it has to be sanitized as well. So let's go inside to see how many people are shopping today and the price of the vegetables. That's coming. Inside the shopping mall, I don't see a lot of people right here. So it seems like the number of shoppers has decreased since the virus outbreak. All of the vegetables, fruits, and some stuff that I picked from the supermarket. This is roughly 148 yuan, which is about uh, 25 U.S. dollars for all of this. So as you can see, I got some strawberries, uh, mushrooms, um, tomatoes, eggplants, um, pear. So I have pretty much everything I wanted, and it's actually fairly cheap to buy vegetables and fruits from here. Than going to the apps and buy it online, so I would come back often and buy stuff. It's pretty convenient. The only thing is you have to wear a mask, as you can see, everybody does. So pretty good shopping experience, and、um, I'm pretty happy about that today. In Qingdao, public transportation, including buses and subways, has been running without hitch. Starting from February 18th, all passengers who ride public transportations, including buses, 
taxis and subways are required to scan their QR codes on WeChat or Alipay, which connected with their real name and contact information to purchase a ticket. At the same time, at the entrance of highways, there's also checking points for every car. Right now, he's checking my body temperature. 把后备箱打开。Every day at 3 p.m. China Central Television will live stream a one-hour press conference hosted by Chinese government officials with a brief announcement of the latest updates about the treatment and development of the virus. Journalists from many major Chinese media outlets will then ask questions. The coronavirus put China at a standstill as concerns grow over the timeliness of seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Many Chinese have been staying at home without going out for more than three weeks. Streets are empty, restaurants and shops remain closed, and activities are cancelled. It was rare to see China look like this, and for most people, they are consumed with boredom. From the importance of improving China's public health defense system to the consequences of inaction of government officials to closing the loopholes in wildlife protection, China has definitely learned a lot from this crisis, yet by paying a high price.